morning everybody. Day two of the DeWerp Tag and Release Research Project. Rihanna and myself is going to go down here and hopefully catch some nice fish for you. So Rian is on sharks today and today I'm lucky enough to be able to fish for big fish. And yeah, water looks a bit clean today but you know what, we're fishing in the whip so the chances of us getting a couple of bonus fish are very good. Yeah, yeah we got a couple of uh, fish yesterday, some, uh, some spotties and a couple of nice fish. Uh, some nice elf in the water, so yeah, we're going to see if we can uh, connect them today. And uh, oh, I see the water's looking a bit stronger than yesterday, but chillier as well, so yeah, let's see what happens. Huh? So far, it's just day two now, so uh, a bit of a trick over the soft sand yesterday. But uh, we had some good fish yesterday, a whole lot of volume. Uh, it's doing for us, and uh, yeah, the conditions are looking back there. A bit of rain this morning, but the sun's come out, so the lines in the water now. And, uh, good. Cool, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. The tagging initiative that's been running for several years has delivered some significant information that assists in the management and protection of our species. Okay, so uh, it's a little female smooth down shark and uh, they are extremely powerful for their size, uh, you can see, especially between the rocks. They're just trying to get a bit of and put a tag in there. Uh, so uh, yeah, got it in a chock cup cup and some uh, Mackie fillets around it.
this is one thing South Africa can be really proud of and that's our marine protected areas that's really been managed very well. Now this is the third day at De Whip, which is a marine protected area in the Western Cape. The second day the weather picked up quite a bit and still affects it even though this area holds a lot of good fish and the guys struggle to get some fish. But on the third day things got a little bit better. Good morning everyone, day three of the De Whip Tag and Release project. Today we will be, uh, I'll be fishing for Falun and Rian is on sharks again. Yesterday on the edible session, big edible session, it was very slow, water was a bit cold, um, there was a lot of current in the water and not a lot of fish came out. I was lucky enough to get a muscle cracker, white muscle cracker or a brush as you guys know it in a towel of 68 centimeters and I also got a beautiful bronze beam of 58 centimeters uh, total length and fork length was 53 centimeters today conditions the water is quite rough so let's see how it goes today preferred bait today once again is going to be white mussel it seemed to work the best on the first day setup today is exactly the same a 4000 size reel I'm going to be fishing with the Adrenaline Spin Triple X 12 feet K light. Beautiful rod, handled that uh, pressure the other day, the muscle cracker the other day beautifully. No problems with the muscle cracker. Um, yeah, and once again, thank you for John at Yakita, our retail partner, to making this possible for us. And also, go and have a look at his new online store. now is very foul. The cameraman can show you these scattered reefs and bricks everywhere. The nice thing about fishing with braid and the leader and the, the swap, uh, snap swivel is every time you break off, you break off on the swivel itself, then it is very easy just to change the swivel, take the swivel out in my bag, I keep a couple of extra traces ready to use, lock the snap locks, just add another sinker to this sinker clip and there I'm ready to go again. release it so that the, it gives the fish chance to swim itself free from the rocks.
just tracked with a 33 centimeter halyun. I noticed fighting the fish, the sinker line got stuck the whole time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to shorten the sinker line to prevent getting stuck on the way in. I've been fishing for a while now and lots of small nibble and no proper bites. The other day adding a flow to the works for me so what we're going to do is change over to the trace with a little bit of flow to it. We're going to prepare a muscle bait. Like I said, this is the way that works for me. There's a lot of different ways putting the bait onto your hook. But this is a quick, easy way and this is, I found it work best for me. Put the muscle between your fingers. Take it, the Cotton Pro latex cotton, the thick one, to your start wrapping it around your fingers over the white muscle. Take it off your fingers, give it a couple of wraps, especially on the top side where the meaty, juicy side. Take your hook, push it through, turn it around, push it through again, make sure that the point is exposed. Liesl explained in the previous episodes, Halyun is quite a sturdy and robust fish and needs the kind of thrashing into the water to give a direction to swim away and normal practice when releasing them. Changing over to the float definitely worked. Got a nice 40 centimeter Halyun. Very important when fishing, always make a granny knot in your sinker line to weaken it, bringing the, fighting the fish on its way out. Uh, the sinker got stuck and I was lucky enough to break the sinker off and get the fish on. We've been fishing this one spot now for the last two hours. Fishing was very slow, there's a lot of small fish in the water picking off all the bait. Um, I've got two halyun that was over 30 centimeters that I could tag and then I had four undersized halyun or under 325 and 30 centimeters. So we decided to go down the beach to a low water spot. The tide is busy dropping and the guys that was fishing for halyun yesterday got a couple of nice halyun down at the bottom there. We fish, that is like I said the other day, we put it flag from number one. That little hill there is called Lane Crans, that is where the number one flag is. That's where we're going to start off. And if the cameraman is fit enough, we're going to end off at number 33, three and a half kilometers down the beach. Let's go. I think this will give a lot of old timers some reminiscence of what our coastlines were like a few decades ago with an abundance of sea life and marine life on the rocks as well as a good chance of getting the fish you're targeting.
all of us as anglers can learn from this. And just be considerate and understand which species is important to release your slower growers and resident fish and what impact it can have in our intercoastal areas. I've been coming to the work for the last 10 years and I've fished with some of the greatest anglers here and the one thing that they've all told me is the secret for success if you want to go angling is to have the best possible bait and yeah since then I've always made sure the number one thing in my box that's very important is proper proper bait and now lately I've been getting all my bait from Jock at Agio Baits definitely some of the precious best bait in the Cape so if you guys need some bait go in and look go to either Yakita or most of the local tackle shops in the Western Cape supply Agio bait bait just look for the orange and blue Agio sticker on the packaging The teams always get divided up between edible fish and non-edible fish and sometimes some of the areas are more the smaller edible fish. Now I'm going to try some red bait. I basically do the same bait presentation as with the white mussel. The only difference is I make sure my hands is clean before I touch anything. Andrea, what do you think of the whip so far? You've got the mayor, well, I'm going to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the whip's awesome, huh? it's just uh, fortunately nothing to do about the weather. But the fishing is really unbelievable. Uh, but yeah, I think today we saw uh, everything is really dependent, even in a place like this. The previous two days was really, really good. Uh, the guys got a lot of call unit. And uh, got some nice spots in the smooth downs as well, some pink elf. So yeah, you can, you can see the difference that the MPA makes. Actually, a massive difference. You see the life on the rocks and just the uh, need to clean the beaches there. So, yeah. so yeah, it's important to uh, have areas like this, definitely. So yeah, a new meal. I've been coming here for the last 10 years and I promise you it's one of the biggest privileges that you can imagine to be able to fish in a place like this. Like we have said, from pirates basically all the way up to Cape Town depends on the EPAs like this and yeah, the fishing is just unbelievable like we had said unfortunately today the weather is not playing along but we call it Afrikaans long beer water the water is pulling, pushing up quite high and then pulling back very far it's quite dangerous as well but yeah a couple of volumes so far. Okay, so yeah, just got this beautiful villa pad. I put in a piece of uh, choca, choca blob and uh, one of, uh, actually a one the bend the circle. Which, look at that nook up there. That's perfect, huh? Beautiful fish. So you just gonna take some measurements and uh, put it back. now and yeah as you see the sea is really strong like probably four meter swells so I'm just looking for some some black tail and you know just with some chocolate blob baits uh, scratching around to uh, see if we can get some uh, just get the board going again we thank you all for watching and a special thanks to everybody that's already subscribed to our channel if you're not please do so make sure you hit that bell notification button to be notified every time we upload a video. Also like this video as that really helps us and we'll see you soon again.